hitting the home stretch here on Liquid Lunch on a beautiful Thursday downtown Toronto. Uh, Rick is uh, staying on as co-host, and we've got Gary Hibbert joining us from Smart Home Choice, and uh, good to meet you, Gary. No, nice to meet you as well, too. Thanks and for having me. Yeah, it's great to, uh, we're going to talk some real estate, which is interesting. Uh, I mean, it's a big topic here in Toronto, right? It is. I mean, it's like, uh, I don't know. It's just, uh, well, people are saying it's so expensive, the market's been going up and up and up Yeah, it doesn't up. feel like it's going to come down. Does it? it well, you know, it, it did last year, in, in April. When it, the, uh, the the Liberal government made the uh, made that change, right, and, yeah. and it did slide. I think we saw a, a bigger effect out on the on the outskirts uh, of of say Toronto, so like out in a or, uh, Ajax, Whitby, Oshawa, like the you know. edge of exactly the city. exactly the, right. the big mega city Toronto. Yeah. Um, but but you're still seeing it heated, and and especially because you know I do work with a lot of real estate investors in in that lower market where you're in that three to five hundred range, and that's kind of that sweet spot where a lot of the investors that I work with like to sit in. You mean they want to buy a home for three to five hundred thousand dollars? Is yeah. that what you're saying? Yeah, and and so now you're probably looking at me with the, with the huge uh, with the huge eyes like where yeah. are you going to find you? homes at in that Hamilton. price? In Hamilton, right? Yeah, exactly. So in Hamilton on the Oscars, Kitchener, Cambridge, uh, Waterloo. Um, and on the side where I, where I live, which is out in Ajax, where we're doing it is out in Oshawa, yeah. uh, Curtis, Bowmanville. Uh, and then last year, uh, just prior to, the, to the, 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 the correction that we had in April, we then had to move out to Coburg and, and Peterborough. And, uh, you and didn't mention pretty, Port Hope. And Port Hope. Okay. And Port Hope. And I, and I do like Port Hope. And a lot of people are like, ooh. I like downtown <laughs> Port Hope. It, it's, it, it's, it's, it's it's got a great feel down it there. It does. You know, I yeah. really like Port Hope. But there is, um, the, the, you know, some people are a little bit scared of Port Hope um, because of the, the low radiation We don't want to talk about there. that. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. But but they're doing a huge cleanup out there. Yeah. And and once that cleanup is done, guess what? That's probably going to be one of the best places to, to invest because it's going to be one of the cleanest places to, be, you know, to, to, to invest in. You know, I went through downtown uh, Port Hope on my bike once, and uh, it was just got that old nice old downtown type vibe to it uh-huh. so uh yeah it's got the nice and, and you know where, you know where else is well too that's got that nice kind of downtown vibe to it that and um has the same feel of port hope as Coburg. so i don't know if you've gone as far I, as Coburg, and it, and yeah. they've got a beautiful beach up there as well i too. know it's right on the lake it is it yeah. is yeah it's gorgeous you, you didn't mention guelph though is it is it well guelph's a beautiful city probably one of my favorite is it well, the downtown Guelph is really quite beautiful. The reason why I didn't mention Guelph is because I'm not familiar with it. I, oh, I know of it, but, but I've never... In, see, and, and again, so I'm, I haven't really done a lot of investing out on the west side. just take a day side. trip out there I and should. just check out I the should. downtown I tell you Guelph. what, why don't you take me out there and, and <laughs> show me around? Because <laughs> okay. I would be interested in, in, in seeing Guelph and checking it out All for right. the day. Okay, cool. Hmm. All right. Um, okay, so now, so the, the s- s- smart home choice. This is... a. Uh, is it like a club for it is people a club. that want to invest in 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 real estate. cash positive real estate? Exactly. It, yeah. So so it's a club. It's a club that myself and my wife started back in two thousand and ten, and really what we what we focus on is the education piece um, and, and making sure that they're educated before they actually go out into the world of real estate investing because. Um, it, it can it can be scary, especially when you don't know what you're what you're doing out there, right? Um, you know, you watch HGTV, and all of a sudden now you, you're seeing people out there that are investing in real estate, and you know, take this house and flip it or whatever it may be. There's a lot of but lessons that you can learn oh, the hard there's tons, way. Oh, tons, tons. Let me <laughs> tell you, I, and I've learned I've learned a lot over the years on yeah. what to do and, and what not to do. Yeah. And so I'm always big on, you know, people that make a lot of mistakes in in in, in life to say. And not only just real estate investing should always uh, should always do seminars, because I want to learn from people who, uh, who make mistakes <laughs> and say don't do this and and do that. Yeah. All right. So. So okay. So well, it sounds like maybe you've learned a few lessons the hard way yourself. Oh yeah. Right. Oh yeah. I have. And, I have. and uh, so, you know, so I guess people who join the club can uh, benefit a little bit from from some of those hard lessons that you learned. Absolutely. Uh, um, and, and so, and so, what we do uh, again is kind of go back to smart home choices. So every month we have a mastermind event where we have different guest speakers that will come out and, and educate our, our members. So we have members. So there is membership that we have, but also anybody in in the area that's interested in coming out and learning about a real estate investing can as well. Mm-hmm. Um, so we'll have uh, people from say our accountants or our lawyers or contractors or whoever it may be 
um, to educate on real estate investing. And I've always said that, you know, there's no right or uh, wrong type of a strategy, meaning, you know, whether you want to flip or whether you want to do single family home or multifamily or, or rent to own. It's just make sure that you're investing in a, <clears throat> a strategy that suits your lifestyle, mm -hmm. right? That, that's the key. So we're big on the education piece. Figure out what strategy that you want to implement and then run with it. Mm -hmm. Right, and then and then we're there as the investment uh, advisor or and real estate coach. Well, yeah. Plus, you can <coughs> offer access to the market. Uh, I suppose you know the whole mortgage side of things is a whole other side. I mean, right. as you, you mentioned, contractors and all that kind of stuff, and really all these different uh, essentially stakeholders in the real estate business, right? Right. Uh, and are, they're going to come into play at some point in anybody who's managing property. Exactly. Right? Exactly. So now when they come to myself or, or so I've got two other real estate agents, so Chris and Quentin, they're, they're also coaches as well too. Um, <clears throat> when they go out now and they buy that investment property with one of us, we've got the whole team set up. So if they need a property manager or if they need that accountant or they need that lawyer, um, whoever it is that they, they need, we're there to, uh, to assist them. Right. So you do, um, you do. Uh, is it a meetup that you run, like once yeah, a month, or exactly. is it a club? I mean, meetups just a great tool to uh, help people get together. For exactly. Reason, right. And so we utilize meetup. Um, you can find us on Facebook. You can find us on LinkedIn, Twitter, all the different social medias uh, platforms that are out there. And then from there, they can find us and, and come up to our club. And right. where do you do the? meetings do you have different locations or we, we do them in ajax okay yeah so and i, I don't know if you if you know that there's a, a casino out in ajax so the casino i didn't know yeah that. yeah so the casino in ajax so the casino actually found us online through one of our advertising that we were doing yeah and said hey look you know what we've actually got a uh, a facility uh, downstairs that you can actually utilize why don't you host your meetings uh, yeah, at, at at the casino and it's 724 because we were used to, we used to do them at the um, um, at the, the recreational center, mm -hmm. and at the recreational center we had to be out of there by by 10 p.m. Mm -hmm. But when you're investing in real estate and you've got great speakers that are out there, at the end you always want to network. Yeah. And the networking component part of it started around 9:30, and that's where now you know as an investor you may want to talk to another investor and potentially because the one thing with real estate investing you run out of money very quickly. So that's where you start getting into joint ventures. And plus, it's great that if you do run out of money, you can just go out there, drop a quarter in a slot machine, and make yeah. enough money to <laughs> exactly. buy your next property. <laughs> right? Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> now, so. where, actually, where is the casino in Ajax? Uh, the casino in Ajax is located by around Salem and Highway 2. Um, that's just north of the, uh, or south? No, it's south there, isn't it? South of the 401? It's just north, north of the okay. 401. Yeah, just north of the 401, and now I know that there's talks that they're thinking about moving the casino into uh, into Pickering. Is it a um, like is it a, a specific purpose fundraising casino, or is it like a just a, a it's a slot, it's slots, yeah. and and they've also got um, horse racing there as well oh. too. Oh, just like in Flamborough Downs and by Hamilton, the slots and horse track racing. Yeah, okay. exactly. Yeah. And so they wanted to get the tables there. Yeah. Um, but uh, they got. Um, uh, not outbidded, but anyways, it, it just made more fundamental sense to actually move it to Pickering. There was a lot more land that they had there, yeah. uh, so they now they, they're talking about putting like a water park there, and there's like a movie theater, and there's a whole um, everything, everything, everything. Disney. And and where the casino is located right now in Ajax is close to residential. Oh, I see. Right. So, so now to, to grow and expand, up. it just didn't make sense to kind of keep it that close to residential. Right. Okay. All right. So I mean, let's just talk about we we talked a little bit about the market how. Um, it's very expensive in Toronto that we've had a bit of a correction yeah. because of government policies. Um, and it just seems, I mean, I, I told you that I was doing real estate. Yeah, that was did. so long ago, and it was like... How I'm, long ago was that? Well, I don't even want to say. But, uh, <laughs> I mean, I could have bought a house once. I saw a house once sell for $10,000. Yeah. Okay. And, and, and that's the thing with real estate, right? Because here's what happens is that people are always concerned with trying to time the market. Yeah. And really what it comes down to is not timing the market, but time in the market. So the longer you're in the market, um, you know, the better you're going to do. You know, so when I got into real estate investing, I started back in 2008. And 
people would look at me and say, you know, Jesus, that's the worst time to get into it. That was when we had the big correction. But now look yeah. back now. No, no kidding. And, 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 you know, we're in 2000 or 2018, 10 years. And, you know, Prices what is done. Oh, or more, more than, than that. that. It's, it's, it's more incredible. Than that, right? It's incredible. Because I so, thought too, yeah, I know. Uh, that's sort of when, uh, anyways, I won't. So if you're saying there was a correction uh, April 2017 because of some government policy by the liberal provincial government, and now we have the progressive conservatives in there with Doug Ford, how do you think that's going to affect the real estate in, in Toronto? Do you think Doug Ford as the premier is a good thing for real estate? Because I remember last time the PCs were in power, people were poking fingers at them saying they were like the hack and slash government, cutbacks here, cutbacks there. Yeah. How do you think that's going to affect the real estate market? Yeah, you know, this is now starting to, you know, get into politics here, right? And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm more on the side of let the, the markets kind of dictate themselves. But one of the things that the Liberal government put in was, was rent control, right? I don't know if you guys the heard about that. provincial Liberals, you mean. Exactly. Right? So they yeah. put rent control in And that's something that investors need to be aware of and consider. Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. Yeah. So when you hear rent control, especially if you're, if you're a renter, if you're a tenant, um, it, uh, it sounds really good, mm -hmm. right? Because, okay, cool, now an investor uh, can't take advantage of the situation and raise my rent from $1,500 to $2,000, okay? Um, that really wasn't happening a whole lot, mm -hmm. okay? It wasn't widespread. But what happens now is when the government put rent control in, right? If you're now, say, a, a big investor, um, what are you gonna do then? Are you gonna build an apartment building, purpose-built for, for, for renters? or you're gonna continue to buy, build condos. You're gonna to continue to build condos. So what happens is those investors aren't gonna buy or build those apartment buildings. So now you don't have purpose-built apartment buildings. So you've taken away the supply from the tenants. Then what happens is really there's a limited supply, vacancy rates now go down very, very low. You're putting and upward pressure on, on natural rent prices. There you go, exactly. Right? So it sounds good, but actually, it's, it, it really isn't. You know, these this whole debate about rent control versus uh, let the free market uh, determine prices has been ra has been going on. I remember that that debate happening in Ontario in the 70s, and yeah. it just doesn't ever seem to go away. But on the other hand, uh, you know, the affordability of of housing in Toronto is. Um, I mean, it's nice for people that are already in the market and have seen the the value of their properties go up, but it's r brutal for people that are just trying to put a roof over their heads. It is. It I really mean, is. I'm not sure what the answer is uh, other than, like, let's... Uh, I mean, it, it's hard to believe. They're building... <coughs> you look out the, any window in Toronto, you can see uh, new uh, residential units uh, being built, but uh, despite this massive supply increase, the... The upper pressure uh, seems to be there on the price of rent. Sure. So, so here's some of the answers, right? One is, and, and when I'm working with my investors, is you know a lot of times they want to invest in Toronto because it, it, it's it's a great city, it's a sexy city. So, but to me, it's like, well, look, you don't need to be in Toronto. There's lots of people that live in Peterborough. There's lots of people that live in Coburg. There's lots of people live on the outskirts. So all you got to do is just go out to those cities and understand the fundamentals. Mm -hmm. You know, what's the, the job growth? Mm -hmm. Understand that. What's the, um, you know, the income growth? Mm -hmm. uh, what about population growth? Um, what are they doing with infrastructure? Right? So, you know, the 407. When they were building that 407 along the top there, mm -hmm. and this is um, before Curtis and Bowenville really kind of blew up. I'm not sure if you guys have heard of those cities or towns. But... We started investing out there. And a lot of people were like, why would you invest in Curtis and Bowenville? It's because I'm looking at where the market is going. I'm looking in the future. Where right? that infrastructure is headed, that 407 infrastructure. 100%. Yeah. So it's like, it's so look at it this way. It's like having a heart. So you got a heart, okay? And you've got four arteries. Imagine building another artery. Mm -hmm. That's huge. That's, that's, that's what infrastructure mm -hmm. is doing. Mm -hmm. So it's allowing now more people to get in and out of the city quick. Yeah. So and then does it not make sense to invest in those locations? And think right. about even things like uh, not just highways, but my sister, they bought a place up near uh, Keel and Finch. They did that uh, a few years before the subway uh, went in, and, it's, and the prices started going up immediately, people anticipating the subway. Right. Now the subway goes all the way up to Vaughan, and, and all those property values have increased just because of that subway access. Right. Now. And, and so sometimes people will ask me, like, well, how do you know if you're going to be able to get renters out there? 
That's a good question. So what I'll do sometimes is I'll just do like a test ad in Kijiji. Say, yeah. hey, look, I got a house. Oh. I put a house up. Yeah. Rent is 1800 bucks, and see how many people call me. Mm. Now, I also don't want to waste people's time. Mm -hmm. So then I'll see, look for another property that's available for rent and say, hey, look, you know what? This property is no longer available, but you can go over to this property over here. It's available. Right. So now I'm testing it. So I'm also yeah. doing tests as well, too. And, you're and also sampling. serving somebody who's trying to rent their house. Yeah, exactly. And you're serving people that need a house, right? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So, so that's what I'm, I'm big on is uh, finding markets where the fundamentals, the numbers make sense because I'm really big on, on cash flow. Okay. You know, I think cash flow is probably the most important piece of, of real estate investing. Here's a good way to really explain it um, because I don't, I'm not big on speculating because I don't know where the market is going to go. Anybody tells you that they understand where the market is going, yeah. they're lying. They don't know. Nobody knows. Yeah. So if I'm buying now a property for cash flow and just essentially meaning that what my expenses are and what I can rent it out for is, is, is more. So I'm getting a $100 cash flow or maybe $400 cash flow, whatever it may be. Over the next couple of years, the rent is not coming down, right? Because mm -hmm. rent follows inflation for the most part. Mm -hmm. So, but, but the price of that home, I don't know where it's going to go. So if it goes down, it doesn't really matter to me. Right? Still got because the cash flow. Not, right. So what changes your, your lifestyle? Mm -hmm. It's cash flow. Mm -hmm. At the end of the month, if you have more money coming in than going out, then it's cash flow that's going to change your life. So that's what I'm buying. I'm buying properties that are going to cash flow. Because I know eventually that property will go back up in, in, in value. So that's where I, I kind of started at the beginning is not timing the market, but time in the market. Okay. Yeah, just looking at any given piece of property and do the quick uh, break-even analysis. Your money in, money out. Exactly. And see if it makes sense. Exactly. Um, of course, considering, you know, uh, out, you know, uh, where red circle issues that might arise. You got to take those into uh, consideration as well. Now, right. you guys are based in Ajax. Right. Um, would it make sense for somebody from the West End to uh, come out? and, uh, or, or are you really aimed at more at people in, in, on the East Side? No, we've, we've got lots of investors that are coming out that live in Toronto or Vaughan or um, you know, Richmond Hill. You know, at the end of the day, you know, if you're an investor, you, you want to put your, your, your money in a, in a good vehicle and something that's going to, you know, um, give you, uh, you know, your retirement a good cushion. Or, you know, if you've got younger kids, uh, something that you can put your money into that's going to give them, uh, you know, good education. Because, you know, you know the cost of education, where that's going, it's, 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 it's incredible. Yeah. And so when I look back now from the time when I first started investing in real estate in 2008 to where I am today, there hasn't been anything that I've seen that's outpaced real estate. I, I really haven't. Yeah. You know, um, maybe it's, it's, it's good timing. Yeah. You know, and a lot of people say, well, geez, you're lucky. Mm -hmm. And then I'll say, well, and I used to believe maybe I was lucky, but, but I don't think there is anything uh, called luck. Yeah, you got to do the work. You got to crunch the numbers. L yeah, luck is when, it is, is, um, is when opportunity meets preparation. Mm -hmm. Right, so if I'm, I'm prepared because that same deal could have came in front of the table, me and you're looking at it, but if you weren't prepared or you didn't know what to do with it, you would have like, well, I'm gonna let this one slide. Mm -hmm. But if I'm prepared, then I can see that opportunity, I'm gonna act on it and know what to do with it. So it sounds like the Smart Home Choice Club actually provides a little bit of both. Right. Right? Yeah, it, it, it does. We're there beside every single one of our investors from beginning to end. You know, so when we're, when we're looking at an investment property, um, we're going in there, and it's not just, hey, this is the bathroom, this is the kitchen. We're looking at it and saying, this is a single-family home. It's got a separate entrance. We can put two families into this home. Mm -hmm. We go into the basement. We know that there's a certain height requirement that the city needs. Um, and then we're now visioning, how does that basement look? Put a bedroom over here. We're going to put a bedroom over there. Here's where the kitchen and fam. So we're spending sometimes 20 minutes, half hour down there with that investor. Mm -hmm. um, as opposed to, here's a property, you like it? Okay, cool, let's put an offer in. Well, plus you're, you're bringing all that knowledge, expertise to bring up things for them to consider that they may not have thought of. It, exactly. Know, be, not having the experience or right. the expertise, right? And, and I think the important piece too is that we're giving them our Rolodex. Mm -hmm. so, so they have everything, the contractors, the insurance, everything from beginning to, to end, mm -hmm. right? And I think that's the most important piece because I know when I first started investing, I almost got out of it very quickly. Mm -hmm. I was actually going to invest in real estate back in 2001. And this is when I was working uh, for, for TD Bank. Um, and, and when I was working there, I really, I really enjoyed that job. 
but it, it came to the point where I knew that it wasn't going to get me to where I wanted to, to, to be. You know, it's because I like taking vacations. You know, I, I like driving you know, nice cars, but it wasn't going to allow me to because the raise that I was getting at work every single year wasn't outpacing inflation. Mm -hmm. And if, and if I'm not outpacing inflation, well, that means I'm actually going yeah, backwards. Yeah, exactly. And, and when I realized that was the third time I actually had to go into the bank to take all my debt and consolidate it and put it into my mortgage. And I was like, well, if this house has bailed me out three times, what if I had multiple properties? What would that be able to do for me? Mm -hmm. And that was when the light bulb went off. Right. And, and I bought my first home in 2008. And, and I'll, so I'll tell you this, which is really interesting, um, is that the first home that I bought, um, it was a very, very small window. This is just before the U.S. crash, where you could actually buy a home, you might know this, um, with zero down, 40-year amortization. That was the first mortgage that I got, <laughs> okay? So my mortgage was more than the price of the home. Oh, Because of CMHC. Right. Right, yeah. so so my mortgage was higher than what I paid for. Yeah, right? and I bought the home days. for what two hundred thousand, and the mortgage was like two hundred and four or something. Yeah, like. yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so I was already underwater. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then once the U.S. market crashed, the Canadian mark, uh, you know, they government was like, up. whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah. And then because everybody thought that the market was going to crash back then, and it, it did more of a sideways kind of a thing. You know, it dipped a little bit, but not much. Yeah, it was. Uh, right, much and then and then I bought my second property uh, the year, about a year later. And, and then I got into multifamily, where it was like a, a tenant upstairs, a tenant downstairs, but I knew nothing about it, really, for state investing, in, right? And I put the wrong families in. And it was the biggest headache ever. Yeah. Biggest headache that I've ever had in my whole entire life. And I was like, this is why people don't invest in real estate, because of tenants. And, uh, and, and I was, um, it just felt like I was gonna lose everything. You know, it, it really did. And that was, sorry, and I just to go back to 2001, when I was working at TD, that was what my friend had told me, don't invest in real estate. He actually warned me not to do it because of because of tenants and the, what they can do to your home. The tenants from hell. Oh, so yeah. Right. Oh, yeah. So that, uh, yeah, yeah, go ahead. ahead. I was going to say, and, then, and so then I sold it. Yeah. I sold it. Luckily, yeah. you know, I broke even. Yeah. And uh, and then I started, you know, Googling. Like, you know, there's got to be a better way to yeah, invest yeah. in real estate. Right. And then I found a club and a club that held my hand and taught me from, from be, you know, from, from A to Z on what to do, how to screen tenants, how to deal with them. See, and uh, and once you once you understand what you know, it, it completely change. The well, way and that you you're gonna make things. different decisions, and you, you're gonna maybe avoid learning things the hard way. Yeah. I, yeah. I just want to say, I mean, it's uh, your story about when you got into the market, uh -huh. right? Just before, um, just before the U.S. Uh, correction there, yeah. the 2008 debacle. It's like at that time you go, well, where's the market? going to go is it going to go up is it going to go down i don't know right. right and then you bought and then the thing happened you probably thought oh man did i pick the wrong time to buy yeah right yeah, yeah. but and like you said you can't predict the market the market didn't really it's gone up yeah. like crazy since then right. so it's like you don't really know even with a crazy black swan events like uh, yeah. 2008 you so. do not know <laughs> i'll tell you something else as well too so when the market did take the correction in april okay so imagine now, so I'm the owner of Smart Home Choice, real estate investment club. I've taught hundreds of people how to invest in real estate, coaching, mentoring, webinars, podcasts, you name it, done it all. I bought an investment property right in April at the worst time that you can possibly imagine. I didn't even see it, mm -hmm. <laughs> okay? My team didn't even see it. Mm -hmm. But it's a positive cash flow. Every month that home brings in around 800 and something, 825 every single month. So then, yeah, it's gone down in value, but it's okay. It doesn't matter. It's cash flowing. Yeah. Right? All right. So that's the key. Okay. So, Gary, <laughs> this has been great to have this conversation. Yeah. If people want to join the club and start to, uh, you know, get involved in the whole uh, real estate market, I mean, what's, what's, what do they got to do? Yeah. So, so the best thing to do is, uh, you know, you can visit our website, which is spartanhomechoice.ca. Um, there. Um, even before you join, you know, mm -hmm. I always recommend, you know, just check out, uh, you know, we've got videos on there and just podcasts that I've done um, and, and see if it's for you. Cause it, you know, real estate investing isn't for, for everybody, but, uh, but listen, learn. Um, and if it makes sense and you, and you want to learn more, then, you know, all of our contact information is, is on there. 
Um, but but that's, a, that, that's a best place to, to, to go and learn more about what we do and, and what we've done. Okay, great. Well, thanks, Gary. Well, thank you. For doing this today. Yeah, yeah. It's been a pleasure. Okay, SparkHomeChoice.ca. Well, Rick, that's it. I think we're done the show. Great. Yeah. Okay, good. It was a great show. Yeah, awesome. I, uh, this is a great town to be talking about. This, as you know, like when you're driving into town, you don't see it so much when you live in a city. But when I go back home to Hamilton, visit my family, and I come back in, you see like the whole Toronto skyline is dotted with cranes from beginning to end. There's yeah, like yeah. something like 200 buildings going up right now yeah. at the same time in Toronto. Yeah. So uh, with no end in sight. And Robert De Niro was in town last week. He's going to open up N- Naboo. Is restaurant and hotel chain just on on uh, Mercer Street beside Second City. There, it's going to be like a forty-nine story tower, multi-purpose, a residential, condo, office, retail, and his restaurant's going to be on the main floor. And they had the press conference there. So we've got people like that coming to town, investing in Toronto and the real estate market. And then when you have the Trump uh, saying that. The last five years, there's a lot of new money flowing into town from outside of Toronto and, and America. Mm-hmm. So there's a lot of uh, people from around the world who see Toronto as a good place to invest, and that's why it's booming right now. People want to be here. Yeah. We're yeah. all here. We're lucky to be here, and uh, other people want to be here as well. So I think uh, it was, it's only going to be good for people that get in because there's going to be demand. Yeah, there's yeah. more construction going on here than anywhere in the world, more than Dubai, more than New York City. Yeah. It's right yeah. here in Toronto. All right. Okay, yeah. thanks, Rick, for doing the show today. Welcome. Well. My pleasure. Thank you for inviting me All to right. come now. Okay, we'll see you next time, everyone, here at channel.com.